What is up beautiful people, TJ here with another episode. Today we're gonna to be talking about my top five tips for starting your YouTube station. Now, I have had a YouTube channel for about, I'm gonna say six years or so, but I really hadn't invested myself very heavily um, until like the last maybe four or so years. And I hadn't seen success until like the last year and a half or something like that. So I want to come over here and kind of talk through my top tips for starting a YouTube channel. These are just some things that I tell people uh, whenever they ask me how to start a YouTube channel or what do they need to start a YouTube channel. So let's get into the first tip. All right, so these tips are not in any kind of numerical order. Um, they're just tips that I would give anybody. Um, so the first tip is gonna be just press record. I think that's the biggest leap. That's actually the hardest step out of all these. There's so many things to think about whenever you start a YouTube channel. Um, but the first thing you gotta do is just press record. Um, I know for me, that was probably my hardest thing that I did was actually press the record button because I was so nervous about what people would say about me, um, my voice, the way that I speak. Um, just there's a bunch of different things that I kind of brought on myself and things that I just kind of got in my head uh, about whenever I started my YouTube channel. And I think I would just tell people just to start, just to record yourself, listen back to yourself, you know, see where you can make changes with that. I know one thing that I do is I talk really fast and I kind of have a little bit of a speech impediment. So I have to work on, uh, you know, enunciating my words and different things like that. And that's really hard, especially because I'm Southern. So it's easy for me just to kind of roll through a, a sentence and then, you know, the viewers are like, what did he just say? <laughs> so um, I would tell you just to record yourself, get, um, you know, get some airtime with yourself before you put out anything, just to see what you can improve on. I know when I've first started now, it's a lot different now because now I can just gab on for hours at a time. But back when I first started, I used to say um and uh all the time. And I would have to go in and I would have to make micro adjustments and clips. Um, I would have to cut out parts of my speech because I would say uh, 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 uh. And sometimes I find myself doing that, especially when I'm unsure about the video or I'm unsure about the topic that I'm talking about. Um, there, There's gonna be a lot more ums and uhs in that sentence or in that video. So. One thing I will say is don't worry about it. The only person that's worried about that is you. Uh, and people will tell you that if they have a problem with that, they're going to put, tell you in the comment section below, you know. So just make sure that you just start, you press record and, you know, you get some content out there because it's going to take you a lot of time to kind of hone in on your the way that you do your business on YouTube channel. All right. The next tip I will tell you is to find a process that works for you. So I've honed in on a process that works for me. Um, I'm very analytical uh, about everything and calculated with everything that I do, but I wanted to make sure that I had a process where it was easy for me to film and easy for me to make videos and stuff like that. Um, for me, it's very hard to kind of carve out time to make YouTube videos because I do have a full-time job and I have a full-time business. So it's really hard sometimes to uh, get that extra time that I need to make the videos that I'm proud of and the videos that me and April are proud of on our Palette Jack and channel. So just make sure that you look at the process that you're doing and work on improving that. Um, it, it, that's not always about gear and that's not always about, you know, the cameras and the lights and the, the audio and stuff like that. That definitely makes it easier. Uh, the workflow, but it doesn't make necessarily a better video just because you have all the, the glitz and the glam and all the backgrounds and all that stuff. Just focus on working on your process for how you make videos and how you kind of plan out your videos. So a couple different ways that I do this. So I have an iPhone. I use an iPhone. I'm using an iPhone right now. Normally, whenever I'm making a video or if I'm thinking of a video, I always have my phone with me. Um, so I pull up my notes app and I will go in and type in, I have a folder for YouTube video ideas. And if I have an idea to pop in my head, right then I go and I type in whatever that idea is because I know how my brain works and normally I cannot remember anything longer than five minutes. So <laughs> I try to put that down. That way I know 
what the idea is later on and I can come back in and I can kind of fully realize and develop that idea um, based on what I put in my notes. Now, if you have an Android, there are different notes apps that you can use. I would recommend Evernote. That is one that I used to use back when I had an Android. It works really well. It seamlessly goes across multiple devices and you can just go through and type your notes up just so you can have an idea of what your ideas was at that time while they're still fresh on your brain. Now, I've made a full video about this other app I'm gonna tell you about. It's called Trello. So Trello is really good for organizing your ideas and kind of brainstorming uh, your ideas. So whenever I'm coming up with a video idea, normally I will come up with just the general overall idea that I wanna make, but I also will go to Trello and I will develop my idea into a full video. So that may just be bullet points, that may be bullet points and photos, that may be um, video ideas from other people, uh, that may be inspiration that I find from a song or from a music video or from a film or something like that. And I will put all that into my Trello board. Trello is a really awesome app. Um, anybody can use it. Anybody, if you have an Android or a, a iPhone or if you have a Mac computer or a Windows computer, um, it's seamless. it works seamlessly across all those devices. And I would not, I cannot recommend it more for people, especially even if you aren't a YouTuber or even if you aren't a business owner, I would recommend it for anybody. I use it at work. I use it in my business. I also use it on my YouTube channel. So you can use it for any, pretty much anything um, that has to do with organization of ideas and text and video and pictures and stuff like that. So Trillo is really good for organizing your ideas. So analytics. Analytics is, is kind of a double-edged sword because um, I don't really, like telling people to pay attention to the analytics at the beginning because sometimes they can put you down because you put a lot of effort and a lot of time into your analytics and then you can kind of see things and they're going to skew your decisions of how you approach making your videos and at the beginning you're going to be figuring things out so you're going to be losing subscribers and gaining subscribers and you know you're going to be getting views and then some videos aren't going to do very well um, youtube is going to suggest things that you should do to make your videos better or to make your video perform better on their platform. Um, but I would just say at the beginning, focus on putting the content out, um, kind of figuring out your ideas and figure out how you're gonna do um, your YouTube channel. But don't think about the analytics at the beginning, in my opinion. I know there's gonna be some people that's gonna disagree with that. There's gonna be some people that's gonna say, oh, he's crazy, he don't know what he's talking about. But I'm just telling you this is what I would tell somebody is don't think about the analytics at first because they can be off-putting if you don't know exactly how you want your channel to be um, and you don't really understand how the YouTube algorithm works and stuff like that. So as your channel progresses, as you get bigger, as you get more subscribers, as you get more watch time, um, as you start to monetize your YouTube channel, um, I would tell you, you do have to look at your analytics and they are important, um, but don't let the analytics drive your channel because the biggest thing um, that I've seen from people that have YouTube channels is sometimes the analytics are so, they tell you to do certain things and then you start doing those things. Then you kind of start skewing away from the original idea of why you started your YouTube channel or why you decided to make videos in the first place. So I think if you be, if you're your most authentic self and you make the content that you want to make, of course, work on making that better, uh, focus on your delivery, focus on how your videos flow, focus on being creative. I believe the views will come. I believe the growth will come um, organically. In the beginning, I'm just, this is based on my experience. In the beginning, I paid a lot of attention to my analytics and I was very view dri driven. I wanted every little view I could get. I was spreading my videos out to everybody and I gained a bunch of subscribers, but I gained a bunch of subscribers based on me marketing my videos, not necessarily because my videos was great, just because I was really good at marketing. Um, and then, so those people that are subscribed to my channel are ghost viewers. They don't even watch my videos. And that can really be detrimental to your YouTube channel. So this, if you grow organically and really look at how you're making your videos and make the best video possible, um, I think that's the biggest thing for you to uh, pay attention to at the beginning but once you get started with youtube once you start making money on youtube you know pay attention to your analytics but don't let the analytics drive your channel they're really geared towards making your channel more successful on the youtube platform but the heart and the soul of your channel is within you it's it's what you put out it's your creative uh, mind and your ideas that you put out into your videos 
The next tip is going to be one that's kind of hard to do when you are on YouTube, especially if you watch a lot of YouTube videos. That is to be yourself and don't try to emulate anybody else. Now, I take a lot of inspiration from a lot of different people, but I'm still myself within those moments, within those um, those ideas. I'm still TJ. You know, I still make content that is TJ. However, I do get a lot of inspiration from a lot of channels. Now, I had to comb back me watching a lot of YouTube channels because I felt like I was trying to be them. And, and you can kind of get into a space where you almost envy these channels and you're trying to, you know, you're kind of wondering like, why are they so successful? Why are their videos doing so good? You can't really worry about that because just the way that YouTube works, they're going to push whoever they're going to push. They're going to push videos that they think is going to keep people on the YouTube platform uh, for the longest. So if they don't feel like your content is going to keep people watching on YouTube, then they're not going to show your content to anybody else. So what you need to focus on is just being yourself, getting inspiration from other people, but just be yourself and you know, the views and stuff will come. You do need to go through and look at some of the trends on YouTube and how YouTube pushes videos and understand how that is and understand how that's going to work for you. So I don't do like challenge, challenge videos and stuff like that. Um, I'm talking about like trending challenges and stuff like that, but I know a lot of channels focus on doing those trendy challenges, but you're always chasing those trends and stuff like that. And at some point you're probably not going to want to do those challenges anymore. And now you're going to be, um, with the channel that has a whole bunch of maybe subscribers, but now people don't want to watch what you want to make, you know? So I, I always tell people just to do what you like to do. Um, just figure out how, what you like to do is going to fit within the YouTube algorithm and, and fit within um, how YouTube works. There's so many videos out there um, about the YouTube algorithm and it changes so often that you really have to look at the latest videos. You can't look at a video that came out two years ago about how the YouTube algorithm works because that's not going to be relevant information anymore. Just make sure that you're looking at relevant information that is going to help you grow. So I'm just focusing mainly on this video. I'm just going to be focusing on you because that's the one thing that you have control over is you yourself and what you put out and what you choose to put out. Um, so I, I know I'm kind of like a broken record a little bit, but I want to make sure that you focus on that because um, a lot of people focus on things that they can't control and, and that ends up eating you alive and then you can't grow. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to tell you to do if you are a new YouTuber or you are a channel that is trying to grow is I will tell you to utilize some of the tools that are out there. Um, there used to be an app called uh, Creatorly, but that's going away. Um, but from that, I learned about TubeBuddy and VidIQ. So both of those apps are really good for looking at trends, looking at keywords, understanding your thumbnails, um, understanding how people are interacting with their channels, where they're sharing those things. And these are analytical things that YouTube analytics is not necessarily going to tell you. Um, also, I use this every single for every single video for my tags um, and keywords. So I think it's really important to understand that side of it, even when you are small, because at the beginning, you know, you're going to be focused on putting your videos out, but you still want to get it out into as many people as possible so that they can decide whether they, you know, like your videos or not. So I don't use vidIQ much for the tags. I use TubeBuddy. Um, I will leave a link to both of those and all the things I talk about in this video. Um, I will leave those in the description section below, but I use TubeBuddy. That is one of my go-to apps to use. Um, they do have a paid version. They also have a free, I believe a free trial. So if you want to click on it and check it out just to see if it's going to work for you, I will highly, highly suggest it. But even with TubeBuddy, you still have to figure out, um, you know, your own niche. They, you can't let TubeBuddy drive your channel and, and tell you which ways to go and which keywords to use. You have to use, you know, you have to use his brain. You got to use your brain and figure out exactly how, how would you, when I think of tags and when I think of uh, making YouTube videos. I think of it because YouTube is just like a big search engine. So you have to think about when you are going on to Google, what are you going to type in to find this type of content or to find, uh, you know, if it's informational or entertainment, whatever it is. Um, and what would you, what would be those words that you would type into Google? Because Google and YouTube are, they're the same. So it's, it's think of it as a search engine and think of those keywords based on um, your video because that is going to push your video organically to as many people as possible. Um, you know, and there's going to be other things that's going to factor into that, like the size of your channel, your watch time, 
um, your subscriber count, all those different things do kind of count into it. But um, your, uh, like I said, going back to things that you can control, this is gonna be your thumbnails, how you make thumbnails. And I'll make a, a little tutorial, um, I'll insert a tutorial of how I do my thumbnails in this video. I use PicMonkey, it's really easy. Let's get to that now. This is gonna be a super quick tutorial. I've got a bunch of these already made. So if you have PicMonkey, they do have a, a free version, I believe, and then they have a paid version. I have the paid version. Um, so I will go right here to edit new image. I will go to blank canvas. I go down to, it already has YouTube ready for you. So you can make channel art, you can make uh, channel icons. You can also make your YouTube thumbnail. So it has the suggested, um, the what YouTube wants for thumbnails. So let's click on that and it will make a, a background. So I like having um, a cutout of myself and April or whoever is gonna be in the video. I like to have a cutout of that. So what I do is I open up my photo by clicking photos and videos, and then I go to computer and I can go in and choose a, a picture or a video of whatever I wanna do. So let's open up this uh, video of me and April looking at each other. I'll double click on that. It's gonna insert the whole picture. Now, this is where the magic comes in. You click this little button right here, remove background, and it will literally remove the background for you. Like you don't have to do anything. That's it, it's perfect. The background is removed. Now, if I wanna get rid of this little top part here, I can go over here to erase, and you know, I can erase that out, or I can add whatever, if it, it, if it takes off too much, I can add some back in. So normally I just do something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect because nobody's gonna really be paying attention to that. Um, and then normally I'll add like an outline. Um, you know, you can go here and choose whatever color. Um, we did purple today. I'll do a drop shadow. Um, I'll add another purple background. And this kind of gives it like a shine. I don't know, I call it a shine. It kind of looks shiny, right? And then I go over here, I click on background. So you can make it, you know, just a solid color. Um, you know, you see a lot of videos with solid colors. I don't like the solid color. I normally replace and then I do stock photos and then I'll find something that's interesting. So, you know, this looks kind of interesting. So let's see what that looks like. So that's a cool little background or whatever. Um, so you can add something like that. And then I go over here to text, add text and you know, you can put whatever it is. So let's just say this is an unboxing video, which me and April do, um, all the time on palette jacking and I make it like huge because the big thing is on when people most of the time people are looking at YouTube on their phones so you want to make sure it's big enough for them to see it on the app so I use a very thick um, yeah a very thick font something like that I always make my letters white because white looks a lot better in my opinion I do white and then I do a outline around it. Um, so whatever color I want to choose, let's do pink. Um, and then we'll do a drop shadow. It just adds drop shadow to it. Uh, let's make it smaller so April's face is not like behind. And we'll do something like that. And I will actually do, we'll make the shine for this as well. So we'll bring the fade down, bring the blur up. And I literally just made a thumbnail and I don't know how long this was, but it didn't take that long. Um, so you can just save this and automatically up the, upload this, but you know, you can make changes to this. If you don't like the background, you can just click right here, replace background. You can go back to stock images. And if you want, you know, maybe you want just something that's white, type in white, it'll pull up a bunch of stuff um, for, for you to choose from. So maybe we just want just a clean white background. So something like that, you know, that looks a little boring, but <laughs> you get the drift. It's very simple to create all kind of stuff in PicMonkey, I highly, highly recommend it. So PicMonkey, super simple to use. Um, I would highly suggest you using a, a program like this because it will make your videos stand out um, even before anybody clicks on them. People are not gonna click on a boring thumbnail, so thumbnails are very important uh, for growing your YouTube channel. Also, TubeBuddy um, with the tags, I'll show you a little snippet of how I use TubeBuddy. Okay, so within YouTube Studio, this is the back end of YouTube Studio if you don't already know that, um, but I use this these plugins. So this is TubeBuddy, basically the TubeBuddy plugin, and then you also have one um, I also have one for vidIQ. I may, I may have did that backwards. This is this is TubeBuddy. Uh, this is vidIQ. I always use the TubeBuddy one because I like um, that I can sort it based on sort the keywords based on the score 
the surf tra uh, the search traffic and that's after your video has been out for a while it uh, analyzed that um, so let's go to keyword score this is going to give you all of the keywords that is within your video based on um, you know things that you say stuff that you type in your description also your title and it actually will give you a score of how um, this will rank within the YouTube um, the YouTube algorithm so the higher the score the better so like this is a hundred that's really good um, you know you have some 82 88 92 and then as you get lower the number uh, you know number get lower and then you go from yellow to uh, to orange and then to nothing so basically I try to stay up in this green area because these are going to be the best keywords based on the search results from actual YouTube so I did you literally just go in here and you click the plus sign and it will add those to your video so like this is a video I put out today um, and then my keywords are all in the green right now um, these will actually change as people watch the video and people click on it or people don't click on it some of them fall off right now it's a lot of them <laughs> and I know it's not gonna be that many um, but you can it's very easy for you to add keywords now you can also do a keyword spy so if you go just to youtube.com and you look over at the uh, you can do a search so I can just say eBay reseller let's just say I'm gonna make a video about somebody eBay or whatever um, I can go right here and I can see over here this is the vid IQ um, it'll show the overall score for that keyword is high it's 66 out of 100 the volume is there and also the competition is very low so this is a keyword that I could actually go through and try to target and get my videos on this page now I don't think I have any videos on the eBay reseller because I haven't been um, really trying to tackle that keyword but um, there are some keywords that I do very well with and they also rank not only on YouTube but they also rank on Google and I get a lot of views from Google based on using keywords that people are actually searching for. So TubeBuddy is gonna be like, I'm talking about clutch, whenever you're thinking about how to grow your channel and little small things that you can do to make your channel uh, better. I think TubeBuddy is one of those things that's gonna come into uh, handy whenever you're trying to get into the YouTube algorithm and stuff like that. All right, so that is gonna be it for today, guys. If you like these types of videos, please like, share, and subscribe. Really appreciate it. Also hit that bell icon so you get notifications whenever I release new videos. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.